Hey guys, another quick video from Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized, low-budget science channel. Okay, today we're going to take a look at topic 12.2, nuclear physics. Uh, and here are your learning objectives. We will split this into two lessons. By the end of this one, you will be able to understand how the Rutherford scattering experiment led to the idea of the nucleus. You will also be able to discuss how scattering experiments may be used to determine nuclear radii. And there will be, of course, some math involved here. So, first, uh, let's discuss Rutherford scattering and this important idea of the closest approach. So, uh, you might recall the Geiger-Marsden experiment from Topic 7, where alpha particles are emitted from a radioactive source and blasted through a gold foil. And this resulted in the surprising experience that some of the particles deflect or even reflect backward uh, toward the emission source. So um, what they expected was a small angle deflection, a slight deflection, and what they got was, uh, in very rare instances, uh, extreme deflection. Okay, so this surprising result suggests a small, dense nucleus at the heart of each atom. So here we have a diagram, uh, and what we have here is an alpha particle approaching a nucleus, and you will recall that Z is the proton number of this nucleus. Okay, so the number of protons is given by Z. E, of course, is the fundamental charge. Okay, uh, what we have here then is a head-on collision where uh, our alpha particle is headed toward the exact center of this nucleus. And this is going to produce the closest possible distance that this alpha particle can achieve uh, in relation to the larger nucleus. Okay, so that's what we, that's what we mean by distance of closest possible approach. And what's going to happen here is that the alpha, part of alpha particle's kinetic energy is converted then to electric potential energy. So uh, we know that the energy of electric potential is equal to Coulomb's constant times the charge of uh, the larger object or the larger charge, times the smaller charge, divided by the distance between the two objects. Okay, so we can further quantify that by um, incorporating our charges. Two times a fundamental charge, that is the charge of an alpha particle. Uh, Z, is, again, is the proton number, uh, multiplied by the fundamental charge of a proton, divided by D. Um, note here that all of our charges are positive. We don't have any electrons involved in this interaction. Okay, we can then simplify that to Coulomb's constant times 2 times our proton number times a fundamental charge squared divided by the distance between our two objects for the closest possible approach. And since our original kinetic energy is going to equal that electric potential energy, that previous formula then will give us the kinetic energy of our alpha particle on its closest possible approach. And we can solve that equation then for the distance of the closest possible approach. And that looks like this. I don't need, I think, to redefine these variables. Um, this, of course, is kinetic energy. Okay, so experimental results have shown that R is equal to R sub zero times A to the one third power. And of course, this is completely meaningless until we define our variables. So let's do that. Uh, R is the nuclear radius. Uh, A is the atomic mass number. Okay, important that we don't confuse that with the proton number. And R sub zero is what we call the Fermi radius, which we should further define. 
Uh, volume is dependent on radius, and radius is dependent on mass number. And consequently, all nuclei have the same density. Interesting. Okay, uh, R sub zero, our Fermi radius, just to make sure we're clear on this, uh, is defined as 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. Okay, so we've established then that all nuclei have the same density. And uh, if you'd like to further explore the math, your SOCOS textbook uh, shows it an example 12.14. So go ahead and check it out if you're curious. Okay, so as we discussed in topic 12.1, objects with mass uh, have wave behavior as well. And what that means is that if we shoot electrons in a nucleus, they will diffract, just like uh, you would see diffraction around any other object. So we can find the first minima of the diffraction pattern by... Uh, taking the angle to the minima and approximating it, uh, the sine of that angle, approximating the sine of that angle to the wavelength divided by b. And again, we need to define our variables. b is the diameter of the nucleus. And lambda is our de Broglie wavelength. So there you go. Okay, so uh, where we have high energies, the scattering intensity departs from predictions using Coulomb force as our principal scattering force. So you can see it here. Uh, so there's this point where we just diverge uh, from Coulombic force. So what's going on here? Uh, go ahead and think it over. And if you're with a friend or two, you may wish to discuss it. Why is this happening? What's going on? Why? So we're blasting, just to reiterate, we're blasting alpha particles at a nucleus, and we're increasing the kinetic energy of that electron, in other words, or alpha particle rather, in other words, increasing its velocity until we get to this point where our behavior chain changes. So what's happening? Pause. Okay, I assume you have thought it over. And I assume that you have correctly predicted that our alpha particles have enough kinetic energy that they can get closer to the nucleus. Uh, remember that they are repulsed because they're both positively charged. So they don't want to get close to each other. But if it has enough kinetic energy... Uh, what happens is that strong nuclear force will begin to take over. Remember that strong nuclear force is only effective at a very, very, very short distance. And if our alpha particle has enough kinetic energy, it can get within that radius where strong nuclear force begins to have an effect. And that changes the behavior of our alpha particle. Okay, so... If we want to investigate the size of the nucleus, we use high energy electrons instead of alpha particles. The reason for that is because electrons aren't affected by strong nuclear force, and they have a very, very tiny de Broglie wavelength, and uh, it is small enough that it will be diffracted by our tiny, tiny nucleus. And that diffraction is going to produce, of course, a diffraction pattern, which you will recall from topics four and topic nine. Okay, and this is just a reminder of what our scattering looks like. We have um, an electron beam, and this looks a lot like the uh, Mar Marston experiment where you have a detector that is rotated around a sample, okay? And it is picking up electrons, and the angle then is me measured, okay? So we're going to find their electron uh, beam is diffracted 
and the intensities then will vary as we go around based on the diffraction pattern. And that's it for 11, uh, lesson one. We will cover lesson two, hopefully in person, but possibly by YouTube video as well. Do not like, do not click subscribe, and have a wonderful day.